that this uh, simple uh, circle sleeveless top right away. So how do we go about it? I want to try to use two yards fabric. So you just close as in fold the fabric into two like this. Fold into two. These are the, these are the two yards. Then you take this from this closed end. This closed end, not the open end. The closed end. So you just do it this way. As if you're doing a triangle. Cut it. So you just take it like this. This is it, the two folded two yards. So you take it like this from this close end. As if you're having a triangle. So a cone like shape. You have it this way. You make sure you align it well. So you can see this shoulder that it's not the normal shoulder. Someone like me that is using shoulder 15, for this top, I'm going to remove three inches from it. It's going to be like 12 inches, 12 inches. Or I could even make it 11 inches. So let's do 12 inches. So 12 inches divided by two, that will be giving me what? That will be giving me six. So I'll just come here and locate where six is. Six inches. So you can see these six inches. So this is the origin. This is the shoulder point. So from this shoulder point, this is the neckline region. This is the neckline region. You can see that it's really a closed neckline. This type of neckline can just be something three inches width by three inches depth. But let me make it three and a half inches width. Because my own neck is somehow, if I do three inches, it will be too huggy. Three and a half inches. If you're small body like her, you could just do three by three. So three and a half inches width by three inches depth. So I'll connect the neckline. Then for the shoulder, you come down by one inch. You do the shoulder slope. So doing the shoulder slope, you do your shoulder. So what's the half of the shoulder? measurement that i'll be using this one we're not just going to really do it like our normal shoulder measurement you know this is a circle top the circle top someone like me i use shoulder 17 or 18 half of it should be uh, eight and a half or nine but for this i'll just try to make it like eight like eight that means i'll just rule Discover the midpoint. From this shoulder, from this, uh, what's it called? From this, is that this really goes inside. I could even make this seven and a half. So this, the midpoint actually goes inside. So I'll go inside. Normally you can go inside by one inch. Can you see it? By one inch. A one and quarter inch. Let me see. That one and quarter inch could make real sense. But the actual rule is going by one inch or three quarter inch. Is it really in properly? 
Can you see the shape? As in, how do you feel about it going inside? If it's not inside as you like it, you could still, on this midpoint, go inside by one and a half inch or one three quarter inch if you want it to really go inside like this. So this is the effect. So you could really go in by one and a half inch. Let's see one and a half inch. This is much. This is still giving me nine. Nine is nine and a half. Nine and a half is much. So that was why I said we should come down by. Just come down by seven and quarter. Or seven and a half instead of eight. So let's do that again. Let me use the whites. So instead of your half of your midpoint, you reduce half for it from it. So the midpoint of seven and a half will be three and a half. Midpoint will be three and a half. So on this midpoint, I'm going to go in by one and a half inch, which is this. Remember, I said we're coming down by seven and a half, and that's it. This line right now that we're using. So you just do your hand hole like this. So let's calculate this. This is still manageable. This is eight and a half, nine. Still giving me something big. I want it closed up this way. But let's go to the length. You come to this and you go to the length of the top. So it's like a crop top. Can you see? So this is something like 20 inches. 20 inches. It all depends on what you want. So I could make it 20. Then make a one inch for seam allowance. So that's 21 for turning in. So it's optional. It depends on the length you want, please. How long or how short you want it. Let's see. This is the origin, remember? So this is the length of the top. So what do you feel on this arm hole is like, let me still make it seven because half of my arm hole for the small size should be eight and a half by the time I calculate the round sleeve. So because this, do you know why I'm doing it this way? Because this sleeve is really inside. The arm hole is really inside. So by the time you curve inside, you have to take it off. If not, it will be excess. If you use the half of your arm while you cut it this way, it will be bogus. Normally, if it's not this circle sleeve that is really in into the arm hole this way, if you just cut normally, you'll be okay with your arm hole because, but because instead of going in by three quarter inch on the midpoint, we went in by one and a half so as to create this effect. Instead of this seven and a half now, I want to take it the arm hole point on seven inches. So let's go. By the time we go on seven inches, that means this is the new line now. If I had a blue chalk, I would have used it. So this is the new line now, this new yellow. So midpoint of seven is three and a half. Three and a half is here. So we are going in by one and a half inches to us to create this curvy effect. It's beyond the normal curve. 
if it's the normal curve, it will just be somewhere here. So, one and a half inch. So, have this right now. Still this, but it's going to end somewhere here to make us have a real ample. Where's the midpoint? Where's the new line? So let's calculate it right now. Mm hmm Can you see? That's exact eight and a half, which is 17 inches, which is my arm hole. So this is the one I'm going to go with. This one. This upper one. So this one. So that's it. Do you understand right now? So this is just how we want to do it. So I'm going to create half inch, uh, what they call neckline. Allowance. In one inch, half inch also. So this, this is just the top. So we cut out right now and stitch. We're going to use a uh, bias binding for the neckline and also for the arm hole. Then we'll bias binding for the neckline and the arm hole. Then we will So by the time you open up right now, you can see. So what we just do is to what? Is to stitch this side. We'll bend this, then we use bias binding for the neckline and also the ham. So let's do that now. What we're going to do is that we're going to stitch this side we stitch the shoulder, then we now use a uh, bias binding for the arm hole and the sleeve. Just let's get along. So, this is the side, the two sides that is open. I'll just stitch like so. Come to the hand hole, the half inch seam allowance uh, we created for the shoulder slope. I mean, we we'll stitch so you can see the half inch seam allowance for the shoulder slope. So I'll stitch on that right now.
pin same for the other side. So you stitch the other. to do is to do what? To use bias binding to tape the neckline and this armhole. So, so this is the neckline. The right side of the bias will be facing the right side of the neckline. So you stitch on quarter inch like so then you turn it. origin just open the shoulder and make sure it crosses it like uh just then we now bend we now turn it here Right now, after this, you just bend it like this and stitch. So you smooth it up with the iron. Then right now I'll do that of the ample. For the ample, you just come just like we did to the sleeve, to the neckline. So you start stitching. The right side of the bias will be facing the right side of the fabric like this. Just take this little cushion like so, and you stitch. same process for the other sleeve then we hem the lower part and give it a good press we iron it properly and then our top is done we cut out all excess thread so this is for the arm hold 
arm all is ready. Can you see? It's just that eight and a half. So you repeat same for this other sleeve right now. You see this the bias. Then we now end the lower part. So let me do that. So I can show you. So, uh, arm holes with the bias this way. You just come to the end line and do what? Do this, but it's going to be easy. Let me not say another thing. But you just try to do it uh, during this for because to get to some places it will be more malicious. But better still, if you have a weeping machine or interlocking machine, you just interlock this on the lower part and it will be nice. But bending it like this is always really pain. She just starts. So this is always tedious. Just have to carefully bend it because it's spherical, it's circular. It's not going to be like just the normal bending. You have to just be careful. And you continue round and round to the end. In a tricky way like this. So right now you give it a good press. Okay, can you see this is the top? You can see it is just how it looks like. It all depends on the length you want and that's how you'll be able to achieve it. And for this neckline to be relaxed, I will advise you come down, maybe you make it four inches depth by four inches width. That will make it cool so that it can enter your head properly. This is a bit tight, I have to force it in because I didn't put any zipper. And for the armhole, you could go in by two inches if you really want it to be curvy. And if you want the armhole to come down, you see, I told you that my right armhole is 18. 18 divided by two was to be was supposed to be nine. But I said I wanted it to be huggy. You can see that it's huggy. So, but if you want your armhole to be the normal one, that's 18 normally. Remember that I went up by two inches to get this because of, Instead of cutting on the half, which is nine, I cut on seven. So whatever your arm on is, go up by one and a half inch to still have a free part. But if you want it tight like this, you could go on by one inch. And I think that's all. So the neckline, the arm hole, then the sleeve, then bending the lower part, you have to be very careful. So always summer, and that's just it. So we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.